And we're here, are you joining us about 200 metres into the Silver Goblets and Nichols Challenge Cup? Some G, Bell and Neeson. Up on the top of your screen, Edge sort of cracked on the bottom of your screen there. These guys also warmed up in the rain, but um, hopefully it's looking a little bit better for them as they're coming off the end of the island. Well, if they weren't warm before, they'll suddenly be warm now. This is a close, close start from both crews as an event. Again, you can see, I mean, the, the pairs event is is just fast and furious down this course, and it feels quite intimate. You're so close, there's no boy line between the two crews there. So the the blades, you know, they're we're in sweet boats now, so those blades are longer than the sculling boats. They're, they're going to feel like they're much closer together than, than even that we can see right now. This is great race. They're just past this three-quarter mile. There's just about a length in it, and we're seeing this lead. See the blue and white stripes of James Cracknell, not that James Cracknell, and Harry Edgson. Itchin Imperial, so they actually row on the sea most of the time. Um, they've come to this slightly flat water. Maybe today's going to be quite good for them. Well, I was going to say they probably love that warm up in that rough, wild weather we were having. Again, we've got a few bits of steering that was just um, going back in the umpire for this race, just warning the crews to move apart a little bit. Um, again, you know, the, the pairs boats are, they should feel more space than some of the big eights coming down, so there should be plenty of room for both crews, but it's incredible how when you're on that course, it always feels you're on top of each other, doesn't it? It's funny now, these shots, you look back and you can see how much space they've actually got, but I tell you what, when you're in one of those rowing boats, and anyone that's a rower can say this, it feels very close to the other crew, to the umpire, to the booms, Unlike any other race in the world, we normally have little plastic boys that you can tap and nothing really happens. But here, you've pretty much got a tree on one side of you, a giant launch and another boat. So, yeah, put that and try and do that and it's, it's pretty tricky. But some nice rowing here for the Imperial pair. Keeping that length, keeping the flatness, a little look around, checking the booms. We look back, back to the Oxford Brooks pair. Philip Neeson, George Bell. Steering from them as well, Captain. There, yeah, it's interesting. The, the last race as well, there was steering at a very similar point. So sometimes you get, uh, especially in these unpredictable weather conditions, you just get sort of waves coming through at certain points in the course. And again, the smaller, especially coxless boats, will will feel it quite quickly. And obviously, if you've got a cox, if you're in an eight, you've got a cox. The cox will almost predict it and steer ahead of the, the steering going off. But in these coxless boats, it it often takes a correction, and that. Can sometimes just upset the rhythm slightly, just upset the timing and, and slow the boat down a little bit. But both crews doing admirably well in these conditions. Yeah, nice stuff here from Merchants and Cracknell, keeping that length, keeping their heads up. And yeah, next shot we'll have an opportunity to see if this Brooks crew stayed in contention, but coming a little bit across the course there, Gwyn Batten with a flag up. That's the umpire in the launch there, you see with the flag, they're really in charge of the race. You listen to them, they tell you what to do, there's Gwyn. You don't want to get on the wrong side of her, otherwise she can tell you to get back onto your side of the river. She has a lot of control over what's happening. So you want to stay on your side, you want to keep it clean for both crews, a fair race. But Brooks here are really pushing back into this race. I think they've slightly taken their rating up, their strokes per minute, their heads up. If they want to go down the enclosures, they better go now. Well, this is the bit, isn't it? As an athlete, you start to hear the crowds as well. There's been a quiet lull in the race and you've sort of been on your own and now you hear the crowd. So you also know you're coming to the last bit of the race, this is the last time you can really take action and impact the race. So they'll feel that, they'll feel the lift of the crowds, but I think it's just too little too late now. Yeah, they've responded. It shouldn't be that they've responded. They've taken their rate of the point. They've put a little bit more power down through those strokes. A little look around there in the bow seat for Harry Edgerson. Are we there? Here's the line. Job done. Brooks come towards the finish line. So that's a win in the Silver Goblets and Nichols Challenge Cup. With G Bell and P. Neeson. Oh, sorry, correction. A win for Ages and Cracknell of G Bell and Neeson.